well, my, my, my body is feeling, is, feel, is feeling more, more now. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, sometimes it's telling me to stop, but, but I, I don't listen. I do have, I do have questions about what it is to be a goalkeeper. And really, I'm fascinated with what your body feels like. And also during a pandemic, I feel like the position is all timing. And if I don't play for a long time, like my timing gets thrown off and I feel bad. You need other people to make you better. You need practice to make you feel sharp and like one of the best in the world. And when you're not training with the best in the world during a pandemic, how do you stay sharp? Well, I agree with you, but uh, it's, it's just a matter of uh, open our mind, you know, because yes, of course, we, we cannot train as a goalkeeper every day as we have the facilities in the in the in the Chelsea training ground, but we have a lot of things around around us. So it's it's just a matter of, as I said, open your mind and see what you can do close to you. Uh, when 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 I was a kid, or when when everyone was a kid, maybe we play a lot of time against the wall and we kick the ball against the wall. So we have to figure it out the way to train and to keep our our body in shape to be ready for the competition. So uh, I handle myself doing gym, doing yoga, doing Pilates. So uh, just uh, kicking, the, as I said, kicking the ball against the wall and trying to uh, train it with my daughter in my in my garden. Um, and thanks for, for, for them to help me to, to be in good condition to, to prepare myself for the for the restart of the of the of the season well there are certain things that you can't replicate even with all the resources of Chelsea FC and, and having your daughter and, and a wall one of the things is sort of developing a body callus goalkeeper I, I try to explain this to people like just walk through your office and just fall on the floor and see how you feel after that. It's an insane job that you guys have. You just, you take nasty crashes up against the ground and you pop back up like it's nothing. But when you haven't played for a while, you're like, ow, this hurts. So you, at your age with loads of experience, what does your body feel like right now? Well, my, my, my body is feeling, is feeling, is feeling more, more now. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, sometimes it's telling me to stop, but, but I, I don't listen. And uh, yes, of course, but... Uh, you know, um, maybe years ago, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, we worked uh, a little bit hard, just hard, and a lot of balls and a lot of uh, time diving and, you know, finish the training just dirty uh, and work really, really long. Now we're training more, more specific. Uh, we train more with more quality uh, um, in the way that um, in the way that we dive, in the way that we have to land, and in the way that we have to make the step to dive. Uh, and this helps us a lot to avoid the, the impact with the with the floor, with, with the grass, and also with with the, the other with the other players. So thanks to the thanks to to this kind of of training. I think we, we we now the goalkeepers can arrive to my age or uh, longest longest age playing football. And I wanted to kind of follow up with you about this, and I'm sure you don't like talking about being the oldest active player in the Premier League, but you are. And I find it incredibly remarkable that not only yourself, but you know your teammate Thiago Silva joins at 36, and the questions are, well, at his age, can he do it in the Premier League? And I'm kind of wondering if the aging process, because of changed training methods, like you mentioned, and just overall, we know more about how to preserve your body. Are, are you kind of anticipating that there's going to be more players who do more longer into their 30s? Well, I, I believe so. I believe so because the, in the way that the players are taking care of the of, of the way to training, of the way to to eat, and uh, and uh, the way to to recover after training, with a lot of machines that we have in, in those in these days to recovery, uh, with the improvement in the physiotherapy condition on the recovery um, uh, rooms that we have, and with improvement in science that. Uh, is helping a lot to the players and not just football. I, I believe you have a, a great case in the NFL with Tom Brady playing until now 43. Uh, so these things is just 
as a players, we have to take it. We have to take it and, and make it uh, valuable. So, uh, of course, now Thiago, Thiago with, I think he's 35, he's doing a great job. And this, uh, this period, this December in the Premier League is, is tough because we have a, a, a lot of games in, in a few days of, of recovery. But he's uh, such a good player for, for a long, long time in Brazil and uh, Italy or, or France. So he's, he's, for sure he's going to do well because he has these uh, elements to, to recover well, to, to do the things well. So he, 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 can, he can do it. Uh, for sure, he will do it fantastically. When we look at your long career, you're one of your generation's greatest when it comes to stopping penalties. You hear this a lot. It's sort of word association with you. It's at such an advantage, uh, advantage position, right, to actually be there at the pen spot, staring down the goal and look at a goalkeeper. Yet your numbers against pens line up with some of the greatest going right now what is your approach to penalties what sets you apart from everybody else well it's it's, it's uh, easy to say difficult to to make or to do uh, because sometimes if you just believe that is a mental condition that is you against the the striker it's, it's more than that you know for sure it's not lucky to say penalty is not for me is not not lucky. Uh, sometimes, as a goalkeeper, uh, um, myself, it was a mistake when I when I said it. But uh, sometimes we said, "Oh, I was lucky," or, or "God helped me," or something like that. Uh, it's just you against the against the, the other uh, against the striker against the taker, and it's your decision or your conviction or even your knowledge, because now we have the opportunity to watch a lot of videos in YouTube, videos in uh, about penalties, about free kicks, about everything. And we can improve our, our percentage of saving. Um, this, is, this is fantastic. And then you have to uh, find the, the right uh, time in to die for the right uh, moment or the right decision in the way if you die before or if you wait until the last moment, uh, which can confuse the <laughs> confuse a little bit the the taker. But uh, yes, I, I've got a, a, a good percentage of uh, penalty saves, but uh, I wish I can increase that. <laughs> 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 I, I always I always appreciate the perfectionism of uh, professional athletes. I wanted to ask you about uh, your newest colleague uh, in, in terms of goalkeepers at Chelsea and Edward Mendy. Obviously, you've been around the game a long time. You've seen a lot. What are some of the attributes uh, that he's brought, and and what have you made of kind of his his start at Chelsea? Well, first of all, he's he's tall. Uh, he's uh, he has a uh, long long arms, and he's uh, fast uh, because sometimes. Uh, Keepers, goalkeepers with the with this measure uh, sometimes are, are not uh, fast at all. But he's he's really fast. He's really fast in in diving, uh, and, and, and also in, involves diving uh, on the floor, which is more difficult for for tall goalkeepers. And um, he's also he shows character in the game. So from the since the first game. He shows character and he's doing really well. But uh, as a main uh, uh, characteristic, I, I believe he's really humble and he's training really well. Uh, but the most important for the team is how is he doing in the in the games and he's doing really well. So hopefully he can continue in this level. You have worked with so, so many great managers that require different things from their goalkeepers. I imagine uh, Pep, and then sorry, even more so, put an emphasis at playing the ball at the feet. We've noticed just from watching the games on TV, what's required of a goalkeeper now is different than it was just 10 years ago. How have your skills developed as someone that has bridged those two generations of goalkeeping? Yes, good, good question. Uh, yeah, uh, the posi our position or the position of a goalkeeper were, were improving through, through the years. Uh, because of the rules, because the new implements in the in the way that we have to play football, 
and we adapt and it took uh, times but uh, we 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 could hand, we could handle it and we can do it now uh, but yes as you said uh, in the way that that pep or, or, or antonio conte or a lot of uh, coach now they are playing playing from the back or playing uh, you know the the space the empty space or the free man or the fair man or a lot of a uh, lot of terms or of um, a useful term that now in football we, we know, uh, but uh, ten years ago we we didn't know, and that's a, that's a just. I I feel I, in this case I feel lucky I feel lucky to to meet these these guys, and to have the opportunity to to serve uh, for them, because you know sometimes you you watch on TV you watch a uh, fantastic. Uh, coaches of fantastic uh, players, and and I had uh, this opportunity in, at Man City, and I had this opportunity, uh, this opportunity in the national team and, and in Chelsea. So uh, it's a uh, my, my my long career, as you said before, is a uh, is is fantastic, is uh, successful in this way. So now it's it's uh, is in my side to take the best of of these guys players and coaches to 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 see what what's better and and what what things they, they can they can improve or, or not but in the way that they teach and the way that they 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 see the football is is fantastic and and every every way is is a, is a good and valuable way to to play football uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the managers that uh, we haven't talked about is your current one, uh, Frank Lampard. You actually had the chance to meet him while you were at Manchester City, while he was on loan uh, there. So you, you've had him as a teammate. You've had him now as a manager. How are those two people different, and, and what has it been like to play for him? Well, this is, is you know the first week it was strange uh, because I played with him uh, one one season at Man City, uh, and he was um, you know uh, maybe maybe. In my case now, the the oldest player in the in the changing room, uh, ready to go to to USA. He was the the year before that that he went to MLS, and he just arrived every day, training really hard, training uh, as a, an unbelievable player. But but then we didn't share a a, a, a proper chat, you no, know, a long chat or something, uh, because. I believe he was uh, just uh, ready to to go to 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 MLS or ready to or m- maybe pre- preparing himself for for to be a coach, you know. Uh, but he was uh, one of the players that I didn't want to play against, you know, because uh, in, we play a lot of training games um, af- the day the day after of the of the game, and because. Him does it. Him uh, because uh, Frank doesn't play in the start eleven, and um, so do I. Uh, we 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 train the day the day the day after, and in the small games, it, it was unbelievable in the way that 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 he trained. Uh, but now um, to have it as a as a coach, the first day was a little bit strange, but but then they he showed the the character. And the and the treatment as a as a person also that the, is difficult, you know. Uh, I believe it's it's difficult to to be a teammate and after uh, be a coach is it, it will be it will be or it, or it is very very difficult. But he he is a is a is a great manager. Hopefully we we can help him to be a, a top top manager. Willie, you've been so generous with your time. I kind of want to go rapid fire, but there is one question before we get into some rapid fire questions that I need to ask you. There's okay. a legend out there about something that happened on the training ground between you and Cesc Fabregas. A Range Rover was involved. Please, I'm <laughs> hoping, sir, that you can tell me all about what appeared to be a friendly wager that um, a Range Rover was uh, the grand prize in a a matchup of special skills. What can you tell me? Well, uh, in in this case, it, well, he 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 count this, this the story very very clear. But I, I will do my best to to count with more details. Uh, 
as you, as you know, uh, Cesc is an unbelievable player, and he had he had the opportunity to to score in Portugal goal for Spain for Barcelona in the penalty shootouts, and in the training ground uh, uh, when I arrived to to Chelsea. Yes, he knows that I I was uh, good or, or so so in in penalties, and he offered me a bet. He told me that if I save a penalty, he will give me a car. Okay, I, in the first penalty, I saved it, and and you know when the he forgot and uh, he didn't say anything, uh, but we went to a game for the Europe League. And he started to say the same. And I call all, all, all our friends, all the teammates, and say, stay here because I'm going to say the penalty. And you are my witness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he shoot again. And I, I stopped the penalty again. So, okay. <laughs> Everybody started to, to, to cry, to cry, to laugh and cry about this situation. And maybe two months ago, two months after or three months after, they they took me uh, to the car park. They removed my car and they put a run runs rover. Because <laughs> as just uh, said, uh, he said to me in a, in the bed is a car. He didn't say anything about which car or about uh, the amount of the car, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, so he bought a, a Range Rover, a very old Range Rover, and he put in the in the space where my car was. <laughs> so, in another, <laughs> oh, he lost the bet, but he paid the bet. So it's, uh, you know, like a, like man. I don't know how you say in, in USA, but if if you if you bet and if you lose, you have to pay, and he yeah. did it. It was, yeah, right. it was a little. But a, it, a little the, the, too old of a model for your taste, though, right, Willie? <laughs> he wanted the newer model, apparently. Yeah, please, because this uh, this uh, this car we we offer for the for the charity after, and I don't know if if the car is is working now because it was very old, you know. <laughs> I, I, be I believe Seth got it for nine hundred dollars from or nine hundred pounds for from a scrapyard. I think that that was his <laughs> run like that. I love him trying to duck you though, and you're like, hey, no, let's go again. You owe me a car, <laughs> and you stop it again. I, I'm no. always, I, I'm always marveling. Unless you have more on this story, Willie. What else you have? After, after this day, he, he, he doesn't bet. I believe anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect dismount. I, I do want to ask you quickly, though. I look like again, keeper to keeper, sir. You see this pinky? It doesn't straighten out. I, I, I took a massive shot to that hand, blew up my hand, and now I'm permanently disfigured. It's my greatest shame. What's the worst injury that you sustained out on the training pitch or on the field that still bothers you to this day? Wow. Well, I, I believe our fingers are extremely damaged. I believe that. Uh, you know, we, 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 can, uh, we can keep doing it. We can keep training. We can keep doing everything. But our hands are, are not the... The same as uh, a normal person. Uh, my right thumb is completely out. Uh, yeah, look at the bump there on that uh, on that right thumb. Yeah. Wow! Wow! It's done. This one is almost okay, but I got a fracture here with uh, uh, with a metal over there. So it's um, yeah, we we compromise our body uh, in, in every part, in every inch. But it's our job, so uh, it's part of uh, part of the job. So uh, anyway, uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, um, our hands is our our tools, our guns to work. But sometimes we we compromise too much and we receive a lot of injuries. One last question before we let Willie Caballero go, who's been an amazing guest. Obviously, Willie Caballero shows no fear. He's the type of person that'll bet Cesc Fabregas twice on a PK competition. But you mentioned what's going on in your hands, and you showed us that gnarly bump of yours. Was there ever one player that you're like, oh, no, this is not going to be fun? They are just going to blast this right at me, and I'm going to – a finger is going to be dislocated at this point. Like, who is the one player that you're like, man, saving these shots, that stinks? 
Well, um, let me tell you a story. When, when I was when I was young, I've been training with uh, with under under twenty three in, in 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 Argentina, and I had the opportunity to train against uh, the first team, the national team at Argentina, and in this team it was Batistuta, mm. and Batistuta maybe dislocated my shoulder with a with a shoot. What a I, I, I never seen a, another another player with such a powerful shoot. That was maybe because I, I, I wasn't I wasn't strong enough when I was uh, 19 years old. But what I felt this day, uh, I, I I I felt that uh, I'm I'm not ready for this competition. Wow! Uh, from since this day, I started to to work it really hard in the gym and and. Uh, and doing another stuff because this uh, this this striker, this man, should shoot the ball and kick the ball and smash the ball and almost uh, break my my hand. Wow! Wow! It almost like made you question whether or not, man, am I cut out for this at this level? If everyone's going to shoot like that, but actually, the good news is no one's been able to replicate the shot that you <laughs> faced when you were 19 years old. So after that, it's uh -huh. easy breezy. That's true. That's true. After that, yeah, of course you have quality players or strong shoots but no 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 like this i never i never i never felt again this this kind of power well willie we can't thank you enough for taking the time out being so generous with your time always great when we have uh, team members of the chelsea squad join us here on the official chelsea podcast sir uh, just a couple of keepers cutting it up over here chris Whittingham, <laughs> willie cabrio friend of the pod Thank you so much, sir, and continued success on a really impressive career, sir. You're one of the great goalkeepers. I mean, especially when it comes to PK saving, you're top of the list, my friend. So thank you so much for taking the time out to join us here. Thanks to you. Thanks for this time. And hopefully uh, this situation came a little bit to step by step to normally, and we can fly again and we can do our, our, our travel to USA or to every part of the world that we are doing the, our preseason and and we can uh, share a... Oh, a come down to Miami. I'll take you to Graziano's. <laughs> All right? We'll go to All Graziano's. Right. We'll get an amazing Argentinian steak. I like it. Yeah, no problem. I like it. All right. Willie Caballero. Muchísimas gracias, senor. Thank you so much. We'll Hello. be back after this. That was Willie. awesome. Thank you, Willie. Muchísimas gracias, senor.